Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer and welcome back to another video. And in this video we're going to be talking about an Atronach build for Oblivion. Now the Atronach, quite a interesting birth sign. One of the most polarizing ones, I would say, in the Oblivion community out of what I have seen. Which is very little. So my results may be skewed. But me personally, I find it you go all or nothing with Atronach. You can't be like, eh. And that's all because it gives you 150 magic points, but you don't restore magic. You have 50% spell absorption, which honestly, for me, I like the spell absorption because sometimes I don't die from a shock, right? I absorb it. So, um, we're going to talk about what you got to do for that. Now, characters, I never worry about the characters I pick, right? The reason why is because if I make a max build, it's different. But if I just build a normal build, it's like you get five bonuses, and points in this, ten in that. It really doesn't matter, and I feel like Oblivion... If you make an Atronach, whatever class you pick, you're going to feel more personalized, right? The orc that is the Atronach that rises from not being a magical species, or the high elf who's a magical species person is the Atronach. By the way, personal opinion, I prefer a high elf when it comes to making an Atronach, just so you know. So the first attribute, the two attributes that you're going to pick is intelligence and endurance. Endurance for the health, because endurance is God in Oblivion, and intelligence for the magic. Since willpower does nothing with magic grit, literally willpower does nothing. You can avoid it at all costs. But then you're going to have a magic focus because you want your magic skills to level up fast. Because basically, the logic behind this is you want your magic skills to level up faster than your other skills. Because you're going to have to have a heavy magic focus. And having poor magic spells in the mid to late game is going to screw you over. So for the magical skills that you're going to have, alchemy because... You need the magic potions. Restoration, destruction, and alteration. Okay? Basically, you heal yourself, you fortify yourself, use alteration to carry more crap or protect yourself or anything else, and then use fireballs and death. Now, I will say, with this build, that's the core skills. Those are the skills that you're going to start to level up. When you max those skills out, branch off into the other magical fields, right? Mysticism for detect life. That's an amazing one. And mysticism's got some interesting things. Mysticism for spell absorption or spell reflection, right? Things like that. Illusion to basically mess with people. It's always a fun one. And of course, you know, you got conjuration to make something that gets hit a bunch. That's what you got to do. Now, you're going to need a lot of health because you can't use all of your magic on healing like most characters you know most characters that aren't magic focused I usually just say hey use it for healing so you're, you're gonna have to have a lot of health and for this case you gotta have block and heavy armor really you just gotta be able to take hits blocks also really good and heavy armor because if you do block heavy armor and armor you're leveling up your endurance attributes all the time you're gonna have you're just gonna naturally without even having to pay attention have a lot of health and for the last skill, uh, a melee weapon, either blade or blunt. One that works with a shield. I prefer blade because I just like swords. Really, I think they did a bad, um, they did a bad when it comes to the uh, blunt weapons in Oblivion. Because with this build, you're going to have a lot of endurance, but you're not going to have a lot of strength in the beginning. Which means the heavier weapons, like two-handed weapons and even maces, you're not going to be able to carry because it's just so heavy. You can complement this with alteration, but you do have in the beginning that limited magic. Atronox sucks in the beginning. It is outstanding for the end game though. So how you play this character is very simple. In the beginning, you use all of your gold for magic health or magic potions and health potions. Fatigue can go screw off. You don't need to worry about that. But all of it, magic and health, because health is so that you don't have to waste time healing yourself, and magic is because, well, there's not a lot of enemies that use magic in the beginning of the game. There's imps and scamps, and you might run into an occasional, like, apprentice or novice necromancer, but a lot of the enemies in the beginning are things like goblins. Maybe higher up is trolls, but you have mostly goblins, skeletons, zombies, rats, wolves, bandits... And not a lot of bandit hedge mages. For some reason in the beginning they don't have, you know, they don't do the archer sword mage combo. I don't know why. And marauders. Like, marauders are a bit late game, later, but 
you don't have a lot of the magical people, so you're not going to be absorbing spells, which is why you also don't want mysticism in the beginning. Once you max out uh, something like restoration or destruction, which you should be using a lot because it's an ancient knock, you want to get your magic very, up very, very fast, you want to then branch off into mysticism or conjuration, right? So this is a, this is Bena. The eighth skill, as I call it, the legendary eighth skill. Either mysticism or conjuration, because that continues to upgrade your intelligence. The only one that really upgrades your intelligence, I believe it's destruction. I don't remember which skill it is that between restoration, alteration, destruction. I'm pretty sure it's destruction. But your intelligence is very important because that's how much magic you have. So if you actually have time, maybe if you wanna if you have low magic, just go buy some conjuration spell bump it up a bunch and then do your thing and so you always have you know the five plus intelligence that's extremely important focus on upping your magic and health with this character that's the beginning late game and end middle game and end, late game you're basically a battle mage on steroids you're not gonna have any agility i mean you might have a little bit so you're gonna get knocked down which is why you damage them with ranged attacks or you summon some god demon from Deidre because your conjuration's maxed out too or something. And that's really, the late game is basically mid game is building up. You're building up your magic. You're building up resistance. Mid late game is you do whatever you want with magic. And you don't have to worry about it because you're going to have a crap ton of health and be able to take a bunch of hits. So that is the Atronach build. Um... I don't usually use this. If you guys are watching this by the time I released it, I might still be doing this. I don't know. Um, I'm going to try every Saturday or Sunday, probably actually on Sundays. I'm going to live stream myself playing an only magic build in Oblivion where I don't wear any armor. I might carry around a knife. Um, and I have all my major skills as magic. And I use the Atronach and I just focus on bumping up magic i might just carry a shield just for endurance and something maybe wear heavy armor i don't know i haven't decided yet but i'm gonna do a magic only live streaming session sundays um probably around 10 uh 10 a.m pacific standard time if you guys ever want to watch me play with just magic that's what's going on so that's it for this video, guys. I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games, and I will see you in the next episode, stream, or vlog of whatever I decide to make.